I have some self-adhesive foam here. This is quite a stiff foam. Not sure what it is, but it behaves much like neoprene. It's quite r rubbery and resilient. It fits on there nicely. That's good. Let's have a look at this film advance. So we've got that sitting there at the 90 degree mark. And the other components will need to be put together. Now assembling this lot. Of course we're going to need a new one of these. Okay. Let me clean these two components because they haven't been cleaned yet. The number disc. And the top piece here. Now interestingly it's lost a lot of chrome right on the centre of that top there. That's an unusual thing. I don't really know how that's happened. That's, that's just an oddity. Okay, so get this together. Normally I'll use some synthetic grease to, uh, as assembly grease, to stick this lot together. So we've got that ratchet. This piece goes on the top. Now this piece has a scratch on it. There's a scratch mark on one side. That's to tell you which way around this disc goes. That scratch points in the direction of the number one on the disc. If you muck it up you'll end up with a film advance which is handily locks up at frame number 22 instead of frame number one. That all looks good. The wavy washer sort of acts to give us our controlled slippage in there. Let's put that synthetic, synthetic grease in there. And let's we'll put a wipe around here. This sits on there like that. And now I need a new one of those. Right, I have my new piece there. Now these are exceptionally thin on the ground. Now the Achilles heel of the retina 2A and 1A. But fortunately, I still had one there. Okay, that's all in place. And I rotated that clockwise until I heard everything click into place. Now I'm just going to run the screw down on that lightly. That screw, I think, is a replacement. Let's have a look at that. Yes. That screw looks like a replacement to me. It means that the original screw was probably buggered up by someone and they've stolen that from somewhere else. I'm just watching that frame counter to see that it does in fact count. And it does. So that's all good. It wouldn't lock at this point because it locks on this pin on the top cover, not on the camera body itself. Zoom out of it. Okay, so that's good. So the film advance is all in place, the shutter release is all in place. We could put the film release button on there for good measure, I suppose.
and it just sits on there like that. Okay, with that done, the body is effectively done. Needs the shutter in it, needs the range finder, needs the top cover cleaned. So the shutter's already done, of course. Let's have a look at the top cover. See what sort of a state this is in. A mystery washer here after my gathering up of parts. Haven't decided what that's from yet. Shouldn't have been present at all. Right. Take the shoe off. I'm being very careful here not to let the screwdriver slip because that satin chrome scars very, very easily. Now I took that shoe off so I can clean the top cover and get that. You can see that dirty mark and <coughs> the beginning of corrosion under there. We'll get rid of that. On the inside there are two screws that hold this bracket in place and that bracket holds our two front windows in place. So I'll remove those two screws. The slot in these two screws is quite narrow. It's not always easy to get the screwdriver to engage. That one went okay. And those windows were stuck in there with dirt and filth basically, they just stuck there. Now certainly need to be a good clean. So there's the top cover stripped down. The only thing that's in it is the eyepiece here. And don't try and unscrew that, it doesn't unscrew, it's staked in. It uh, has to be cleaned in place. To the top cover, I will clean this with some naphtha. There's a patch of um, rubber or something glued on the top there at that point. That's where the film advance lever would have rested. You can see how much oil and filth is on here by the colour of that. But basically I just want the top cover all cleaned. Now there are alternative ways to clean something like this. Look at the state of that. You can um, clean it in a bowl of hot water with a bit of dish soap and a toothbrush and rinse it under hot water and dry it carefully with a hairdryer. That will certainly work and you'll get a nice sparkling top from that. The point you've got to watch is this eyepiece here at the back. The paint Underneath this piece here you've got a uh, spring washer I think and then you've got the glass and then it goes to the housing itself. Well that housing, that rectangular hole there, that's painted black around that rectangular hole. That paint comes off very easily. So if you clean this in hot water there's always the danger that that paint will go and you'll end up with a patchy look inside your viewfinder. And if that happens, that's, that's bad news. Because basically the only answer is to remove the eyepiece, clean everything, paint that piece of the top cover, and put everything back together. That's fiddly. It's unpleasant, takes a long time, and uh, it's well worth avoiding. So I'm, here I'm just using some naphtha to clean all the way around the inside of this top cover. Um, a lot of what I'm getting off here is just residual oil. And because we don't want any, any residual oil in there because it may settle on something else at a later date. Like glass. Okay, that's good. That top cover is good now, that's nice and clean. And I need to clean the glass in here. Okay, I'm going to clean the eyepiece on this top cover. First I'll start with the outside surface. Now here I've just got some domestic glass cleaner on the cotton bud. 
I'm cleaning that outside surface. That's usually the dirtiest part of course. It's the easiest to get to. Now to clean the inside surface I'll just pass this right through from the front of the camera and swirl it around that glass surface. Now it does a pretty good job even though that rectangular opening is pretty small the tip mushrooms out and it'll sweep a bigger piece of section of glass so that's quite clean now I'm quite pleased with the state of that but I need to turn my attention to these two filthy little pieces of glass here because they are anything but good now I've got to clean these pieces of glass you can probably see that they're anything but clean these are really dirty these are the two windows from the front of the top housing generally they'll be dirtiest on the outside face and normally I clean them like this once I've got them pretty clean then I'll finish them off um, typically I use a clean cotton handkerchief with, again with glass cleaner to clean them. You can see the, cut, the dirt that's coming off this is quite remarkable. This could easily be 70 years of filth on there. Alright, where's that? I'll just clean these now. Alright, both pieces of glass are clean. Here's the frame that they that holds them inside the top cover. Now I've got to get them sitting on here. Both of these pieces of glass have a bevel on one edge and that's the edge that goes up on the inside of that top cover. So I've got to sort these out to get that edge positioned. Alright, so that beveled edge is here facing us at the corner. Now slide this into the top of the camera, holding it firmly against the camera. I can get the two fixing screws in place. Let's have a look at that and make sure that glass is sitting in those recesses correctly. They look good. I'll just slacken those screws off slightly. Make sure that bracket's pushed firmly to the front of the camera, to the top. And there's our clean glass windows in the top cover. I'll just clean this shoe and put that back on and that'll be the top cover dealt with. Now the shoe shows the traditional mark down the middle here where somebody has slid a flash into the top of that shoe and it would be a hot shoe flash with a contact in the middle. Of course all it does is scratch a nice neat line into the accessory shoe. The satin chrome is very easily marked by something like that. A mark on the top cover there. I'm just looking at that. It looks like a defect in the chrome actually. It's a scratch or something. Might be a tiny bit of corrosion. Regardless, here's our top cover. That looks sparkly and clean now and that's all it needs to be. Now I do need to have a look at this rangefinder because that's the next task. You'll see how well it works. That's quite snappy in its action and it looks oh no it's pretty grimy. 
I was looking to see if it showed signs of being recently cleaned, but really it doesn't. So I'm going to stretch this out and remove that pin. A single screw holds the pivot in place. That's tight. Unscrew that. There's a plain washer and a wavy washer. There's a brass bush here. You know, I normally scribe a line on that so I put it back in exactly the same place if possible. Because it's got a slot in it, it probably acts a little bit like an eccentric. I'd rather everything was lined up where it started off. This front piece here, this mask, I want that off because I'm going to clean the body in the ultrasonic cleaner and the paint on that mask is fugitive. It would be there for about the first 10 seconds in the cleaner and then it will be gone. So if I take it off I don't have to repaint it. Take the two screws out here that hold the prism in place. These two screws also serve to do our vertical alignment. And the rear glass or the eyepiece glass held by a single screw here. Let's get that out. Here I'm working on that wooden block again and it's handy to have a surface like that that you can push against. Right, there's, there's the, the rangefinder apart. That's as far as we take it apart. This is a semi-silvered mirror. Um, the front face facing us would just be plain glass, no problem. The other surface has got some sort of silvering coating to it. This screw here, that holds a small lens in, in a tube at this position. Now in an ideal world you'd take that out, clean the lens and put it all back together again. But to get that out, you have to remove this mirror and slide it out at this end. It would also destroy the positioning, positioning of this piece here. That's quite important. If that's adjusted wrong, you'll find that as you move your eye slightly in the viewfinder, the coincident images would move out of alignment and it makes it very difficult to get accurate focus. That has to be adjusted correctly. It's a bugger to get right and if you don't remove it you don't have to worry about getting it right. I clean all this in the ultrasonic cleaner so that glass gets cleaned as well and I don't have to worry about anything like that. Right so I'm just going to wipe this surface here with a bit of naphtha to remove any traces of grease so that that's not contaminating the uh, detergent water that I'm going to clean this in. So this goes to the ultrasonic cleaner, the other bits get cleaned manually. So, a few pieces are here, all cleaned and ready to go. The eyepiece lens here at the back of the rangefinder. The convex surface goes inwards. The concave or it's almost flat surface goes to the outside. Get this mask back in place. That looks good. Prism back on.
Just going to get this prism roughly square with the front face of the rangefinder. It's a good place to start my adjustments. That looks fine. And the arm for the rangefinder. Let's get this back together. The glass is all clean. I'm going to put a wipe of molybdenum and paste around the centre. Take the bush, put that back in position. Make sure it's lined up where it was originally. Is there. I'm just going to put a, a wipe of molybdenum paste on the underside surface. Let's put this in place. That just goes on there. A wipe of molybdenum paste on that surface. Put the wavy washer in place. Am I on? Yeah, I'm in the picture just. I see this video camera battery is dying a death. I have to work quickly. I can't seem to get batteries charged quick enough at the moment. Mostly because I'm using crappy generic batteries. And they, they don't do the job. They just claim to have huge capacity and they have much, much less than the originals. Let's get this bracket and pin back in. Check that this is all moving correctly. It all appears good. Tighten that screw. And I'll peer out the window and see how my adjustments look. Right, well I've just checked my adjustments, made a couple of adjustments looking out the window at a suitable target and I'm just going to put a couple of spots of lacquer on here so that the range finder is very reluctant to move once it's been screwed down tight. Range finders as you might know are prone to going out of adjustment if cameras get dropped. Of course it's a good idea not to drop cameras but it's, you can avoid the likelihood of the rangefinder shifting if it's locked down tight with a bit of lacquer. I don't put it on the screws, I don't want to make them hard to remove. Put it on the base of the rangefinder. One screw in place. And I'm going to drop the other one down the hole and hit the uh, hit the spot. That looks good. I'm going to keep the rangefinder square with the back of the body. Okay, that's in place, and now I'll check my alignment to make sure that my infinity adjustment is good, and then after that I can put the shutter on the front. Well, with the rangefinder good, I'm just going to uh, take off the film advance now, put the top cover in place, put the film advance back on, put the shutter back on, and test everything. Before I put that on there, I'm just going to put a wipe of molybdenum paste on this little hook where it catches on the end of film rivet on that top cover. That's just to ensure that it does move smoothly. Otherwise they don't, sometimes the rewind, the advanced lever won't return to the rest position smoothly. Now 
that's all moving correctly. I'll tighten that up. Two screws in the top cover. screw doesn't want to start. Let's loosen the screw at the other end and have another go in case this top cover is not seated correctly. Looks good. That screw does, doesn't look wonderful. May have been cross threaded in the past. Yeah, it's running in now. That's good. Put the rewind knob on. That's good. That's good. That's good. Yeah, does the frame counter lock at number one? Yes, it does. So the frame counter is working correctly. That's good because that was the fault that I was told the camera had when it arrived. Of course, it turns out that there were more problems than that and the shutter was a much more of a problem. Let's flip the shutter back to the camera. Let's remove the... ring from the back. Check that that's seating. It doesn't seat very firmly on the body but it does seat. Now I'll get the timing correct. I'll lift that forward, move that gear forward one tooth, drop it back in, try again. Yep, shutter fires, cocks and fires. Let's try it on a 500. And the 500, that's when it's under the most tension. If it's not going to make it, it's not going to make it on the 500. It's working fine. So that's the correct position. I'll get that retaining ring in place. That locating screw is only barely long enough to work there. I'm going to check the focus quite carefully with this camera because I suspect that it may be out given that uh, the number of spaces that were in there shims. Let's just check that that's seated. It is seated. I'll tighten this up. Pretty dark and dismal out there. Still, I will check this and see how it goes. But it's how does it behave? Well, the camera appears to function nicely. Is it okay on B? It is indeed. Both flash sync settings. Yes. At a five hundredth of a second, is it cock? It does. And it fires and it releases nicely. Right, well I've got to check the focus on this and I'll let you know how I get on. Well, the focus is actually very good. No problem there at all. So, this one, I think we can call that a win. What problems were dealt with? Well, of course the frame counter, that was the identified problem when the camera arrived. 
it turns out that the uh, camera was fairly well effectively jammed up because the shutter was very very oily and those blades were just gummed up so the blades the shutter certainly was the major problem with this camera the frame counter was a minor problem if you haven't got a working frame counter that's not the end of the world other problems well the lens mount was loose on the front stand so this was rattly it, the loose screws here meant that the focus scale ring was rubbing on the front standard which would have made that uh, certainly made marks on that front standard but also would have made the, feel, the focus adjustment feel somewhat rough the focus helical of course was gummed up with nasty old dried out grease anything else of note range finder was a little bit grubby nothing dramatic there the base of the camera oh, I don't think there was anything to speak of here of course the door the struts either side on the door these two pieces here they were bent out so that they didn't have a firm grip on the front standard and it meant the front standard floated otherwise there wasn't an awful lot wrong with it and there's not an awful lot wrong with it now either the Zeiss bumps are gone from the back, those two lumps are gone. I haven't repainted the back of this door, that wasn't on the list of tasks to do. And somebody's gone to the trouble of stripping all that paint off there. And I assume they like the look of that. That's good, it doesn't look out of place. If it had been partly gone, I would have been wavering on whether or not to paint it. I certainly couldn't strip the paint off someone's camera just because it was partly missing but um, I might not be enthusiastic about painting every one so there we go a nice Retina 2A camera and this one will be going back home to Germany from whence it came thanks for watching